Welcome back, everyone, as we continue our playthrough of Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts as the German Empire. If you haven't seen the uh, episodes up to this point, there's a link in the description. Take you back all the way to the beginning. We just pushed push back a major uh, offensive from France into Germany, inflicting pretty substantial casualties, better than 6 to 1, 7 to 1. 181,000 lost for us, 1.2 million lost for the French. Uh, the British are attacking our holdings in Africa, but we haven't actually met their navy yet. Now, we are launching a naval invasion of northern France, which right, right now has 0% chance to succeed, but hopefully that'll get better. I probably should have chosen something a little less daunting than the main part of France, but uh, we do have a... Oh, that's a battle against the French as well. That's not going to be against the British. I was hoping it would be. But we're going to take in the Rhineland, which is one of our Koenig-class battleships. It's one of our older battleships going up against two heavy cruisers and a light cruiser. Let's see what happens. Well, he decided to run away, and we couldn't catch him. We never did spot him, so unfortunately that will go without a conclusion. We do need to go back into our shipyard. And I've got some ships I need to go ahead and scrap and some new ones we need to get built, including a couple of patron ships. So let's go ahead and focus on that for a few minutes. Okay, so here's what's going on now. Um, we have scrapped some older ships, uh, except for a few that are actually in active operations and I can't scrap them while they're out at sea. Uh, but we do have some new ones that are being built, a new Doofenshmirtz. I was about a year away. We've got a new uh, Johann Jacob Dauber II, uh, or two, I should say. We've got a new Trier, a new Unsinkable II coming. Uh, we've got the Admiral Yi and Athena being built. Heavy cruisers, both of those are actually pretty close to being done. Uh, so those are all in the works. We have a couple of ships that are currently suspended just because, well, actually I've got about 57,000 uh, tons to play with here, so I could actually go ahead and get some of these back up and running again. Um, we'll start with the 34,000 ton battleship and then one of the heavy cruisers. I think that'll get us pretty close. We have 11,000 tons to play with still, but this one's over 12, so we'll have to wait. We do have some commissioning going on. Three new heavy cruisers either be being repaired or commissioned at the moment. Everything else is looking pretty good. And I think we have a slightly positive financial note. We're at minus 22 million, so we're obviously going to have to drop some more. Our transport capacity is down really far, so we're actually going to have to beef that up some. We'll have to drop crew training some more while we work on our naval balance. There we go. We've signed a peace treaty with the United States. Let's see how much that is going to get us. Costa Rica. That would give us a port in the Western Hemisphere. We could get some uh, Southern Alaska, but I'm not really interested in that. Uh, Costa Rica plus $232 million in funds would be pretty good by me. I mean, we could take a couple of battleships, maybe. No, we sank most of his battleships. Honestly, I'm not interested in taking any of his smaller ships. I'd rather just have the funds and have Costa Rica. Uh, now we can't take Panama. We don't have enough for that. Costa Rica it is. And $232 million. Oh, my. How did we manage to get a bunch of our destroyers against one of his heavy cruisers? That's interesting. All right, here we go. This should be pretty straightforward. Uh, the main deal here is, number one, hit smoke so that we have some cover while we get in close. And then try to hit them with torpedoes. We'll, we'll go to either side of them here. I think this should be pretty straightforward. Got to be careful we don't torpedo ourselves. He's already got two in the water. As do we. I do have torpedo evasion on. 
So I think we should be able to swing around this guy successfully. We definitely, we're going to have plenty of speed advantage on him here. I don't think the initial torpedoes are going to hit. I think we're going to zip past this one successfully. So the lead destroyer has already put a bunch in the water, and he's been putting a bunch in the water too. It's been pretty crazy to see, actually, how many torpedoes this guy's actually got at his disposal. We're kind of drifting there. That was interesting. It was a bit of a drift. Uh, all right. I think we just nailed him with a couple. Five? Do we hit him with five torpedoes? No, we hit him with some two-inch shells and three torpedoes. All right. Our other side just got their first torpedoes in the water. This is where we need to be careful that we don't get in the way. I don't know why those other destroyers are turning the way that they are. We're just going to torpedo this guy to death. Oh, I didn't know if that, that one was going to hit him, but it did. And we cause flooding on the front end, so that's what we want. We want to hit him in the middle now and finish him off with a little more flooding. Because we're not going to beat him with our two-inch guns. And we got to try to do this before he lights up our destroyers. Ugh. I guess we're not going to be able to get around him that way, so let's turn back around this way. All right, we got him. I think we got enough flooding. Now we need another compartment. We need one more compartment to flood. It looks like that one might be. He's at 4%. Yeah, I really think that one's flooding. It is. It's just going really slow. He's at 3%. All right, we're going to come up here and get some more torpedoes in the water, finish this guy off. We just need one to hit him right in the middle. I think we got it. Yeah. The V5 is just going to pummel him with torpedoes here. There's two and there's several more coming in. We got him. That was beautiful. Death by a thousand cuts. You'll love to see it. This is an important one here. We're attacking the port that we're actually in the middle of trying to launch a naval invasion in. Uh, so we're going to have some significant firepower against a, a rather small fleet, but I don't want to take the chance to auto-resolve one like this uh, because this is going to help us with the superiority that we're going to need in order to try and somehow launch a successful naval invasion of northern France. Just spotted his fleet, and we've already landed a pretty substantial hit on the lead. What appears to be a light cruiser, I think. Maybe a destroyer, but probably a light cruiser. Uh, we've got our three main battleships right here in the center. These are our dreadnoughts. We've got our older tech battleship, the Ostfriesland, along with two heavy cruisers, which actually have some damage. We'll have to see about getting them into port. Uh, they're going to be over here. Then our light cruisers out here on the outside. So I think we can speed things along a little bit here. This is a a pretty light fleet we're up against. No heavy ships, no heavy cruisers, no battleships. We just need to be careful about torpedoes. And of course, probably slow down our speed here because it's going to help with accuracy against ships that are going to be fairly tough to hit because of their speed. He's got three light cruisers going up against our three light cruisers over here. Torpedoes are in the water. Looks like he didn't have the range on that torpedo because it blew up. Oh, that one's going to hit me. No, nope, that one didn't have the range either. That was interesting. They were coming straight at me, but they didn't have the range, so they blew up before they got there. Or they just kind of poofed and went away. I don't think they really blew up because they didn't have the range. Just 
just got to be careful with these with these ships here. I don't want any of them to take a lot of damage. We've got 13s and 8s, so it's not out of the realm of possibility to get a one-shot kill on these smaller ships. There's a torpedo in the water. Let's pause for a second because what I want to do here, I don't know. It might be too late. I'm going to slow down and turn hard. See if we can avoid it. I'm not sure that we can at this point. I might have screwed it up. I might have been better off to keep going. I might have avoided it just by going straight. That's going to hit me. Yeah, it's not a ton of damage, and I do have torpedo protection on these ships. So it's not going to do a lot. Alright, what's going on here? Why is he not doing anything to avoid this, unless he thinks it's out of range and it's not going to make it that far? Because I do have torpedo avoidance on. Interesting. He just let that one smack him. Let's turn before this other one hits him. Alright, let's finish these guys. There we go. Cormoran avoided that one successfully. whole lot of high explosive shells coming your way I love this time of day with the sun setting like that it just makes for a really cool look Cormoran take another hit, or is this just... They've only been hit by one torpedo, but they've taken five, four, three, and two inch shots. Uh, several torpedoes coming at the Karlsruhe, but they're going to turn from those successfully. Problem is our battleships don't have a good angle right now on, the, on these ships that are turning away. Oh, that didn't matter. We just lit up two of them back to back. I think we've got one destroyer and one light cruiser left. Our light cruisers are pouring in on the Epe. I think they're done. And now the Freon. Oh, wow. That was brutal. All right, we took care of that small French fleet. Sank 10 ships. Did take some damage. We already had some damage on a couple ships, so we'll need to send some of those back to port. We conquered Cameroon, so the battleground continues to be in Africa, which is uh, not unlike what happened in the real World War One, which we are kind of a part of right now. And now we're launching against Central African Republic. It's just that in World War One, you also had the crazy amount of fighting in Europe itself, but there was fighting in Africa for sure. Uh, so we should think about what ships... Well, I think maybe we'll wait until the war's over, because uh, right now we don't have a real need to have a presence over in Costa Rica. We could only send one of our big battleships, though. I'm thinking probably a couple of heavy cruisers might be the way to go. We only have 28,000 in port capacity. I wish there was a way to increase the port capacity in these places. That would be ideal. But there's not a way to do that. Uh, but, I mean, France has a couple of things over there that we could worry about. But honestly, we'll, we'll just deal with France over here. Uh, we have another battle. This one off the coast of Ireland. And it's another French ship. It's going to be a one-on-one -on -one between two heavy cruisers. 
So here's my thought process on this. I do have a 1.5 kilometer torpedo range. What I want to do though is I want to identify this guy first. But what I'm thinking is he's a heavy cruiser so he's not going to move real fast. If I can get in close and put a torpedo into him while keeping this angle that I've got right now, he's going to have a hard time hitting me. But what I'd like to know is, number one, I'd like to know what his accuracy ability is. And he's also got a 1.5 kilometer torpedo range, so that's a concern. Um, but I also want to know what kind of guns he's got, because I've only got 9 inch guns. But we're oh there we go we've got the oh he's only got 7.3 inch guns excellent and I've got three more inches of armor than he does all right let's get a torpedo on this guy we've already put a torpedo in the water we need to watch because he's got the same range as I do on torpedoes so I'm actually gonna go ahead and start turning there it is he's actually got two torpedoes in the water on me I'm going to slow down, but I'm going to keep going straight at him. I think he is going to avoid this torpedo successfully. We're getting partial pen right now, but we're also firing HE shells. I want to... Let me switch to uh, armor piercing rounds and see if we have better luck. This is an older heavy cruiser, which means I, I haven't equipped it with the latest rounds that I've got which have better penetration so I think that's partially why we're having such trouble with penetration so far now the armor piercing rounds are over penning let's go ahead and try armor piercing for our smaller guns to see what that does it's just a tough angle we're getting a lot of ricochets here comes another torpedo. Right, this is going to be tough because he's straight on with me. That's a dud, thank goodness. Alright, we're going to have to speed back up because I think he's pulling away. I've landed 12 9 inch hits and 47 3 inch hits. And I think since we switched to armor piercing, we're starting to cause some flooding. So that's good, but that, this is basically a pursuit right now. It's a lot of overpen, but it is causing flooding in his compartments, which is kind of what we need right now. All right, I'm going to have to start swinging back and forth. Now right, we're getting really close now, so let's be careful. I'm going to turn sideways so I can get one of my side torpedo tubes firing on him here. Oh, there's a big hit. We blew up his torpedo tube in the back. Or blew up the torpedoes, I should say. I think we just need one more compartment to flood. And a torpedo from the side would definitely do that. Alright, he just landed some good hits on me for the first time. But we've got him pretty well dead in the water. That'll do it. That caused more flooding. That's another compartment. When that one fills, he's done. There we go. Flash fire. His rear turret just exploded. And he's done. Beautiful. I like these one-on-one -on -one duels. It's, a, it's fun to do that. Alright, so the problem we have right now is we are getting pummeled on our transport capacity. Uh, I think the British are doing that to us. Uh, so it's killing our economy. You can see 1.2 billion in losses from transports uh, so that's our major issue right now and we don't have the finances to be able to replace those losses so unfortunately for the first time we have to cut back the tech budget because I've got to max out the transport and I think we can cut off crew training altogether because we've got 24,000 in our crew pool at the moment so I've really got to pour everything I've got into trans transport capacity to get that back up and we'll go where we can to keep the monthly balance pretty well even but that is absolutely killing me the transport so uh got a whole bunch of options here because of all the wars that we're involved in i'd really like to end these wars with spain and japan if i can 
Let's start with Spain. We'll try to push for a peace treaty with them. Uh, let's look at all the options we have here. We have a battle. That's another one-on-one -on -one with a heavy cruiser, so I'll wait on that one. We've got a convoy battle here. It's actually just a couple of transports we're defending, so that's not a huge deal. Really like to go at it with the British at some point. Another heavy cruiser battle one-on-one. -on -one. Let's go ahead and do this one. We'll take the Kent II into action. Another running pursuit as his heavy cruiser is doing everything he can to get away from me. Ah, looks like he's going to turn. I guess I shamed him into it. So I've got the 9-inch and 5-inch guns as well as torpedoes. We don't have good visibility. Uh, slight sea waves, overcast weather. Makes it a little more difficult. Looks like we've landed a couple of hits on the wall deck Rousseau. He's got 7-inch guns, so it's basically a repeat of the last battle. Roughly the same types of ships. So as soon as we can close this gap a little bit, we're at 2.8 kilometers right now. I'd like to get in torpedo range. That'll at least cause him to have to move. But he's definitely trying to get away, and I'm having a hard time hitting him because of the visibility and the conditions. We got it down to 2.4 kilometers though. If we can land a couple more hits, we can cause some damage and maybe take away some of his ability to run away. All right, let's go ahead and, and switch to armor piercing like we did last time. I think that worked out pretty well with causing flooding. His torpedo range is the same as mine. Which means there's probably a good chance that he will have just put some into the water. So let's go ahead and... Oh, it's going to be on my right side. So we're going to turn this way to avoid it. And then swing around if we have to. Having a hard time even seeing. My hull. Okay, we're good. It zipped past us. We got him though. Beautiful hit. We've got another one in the water, it looks like. I don't think we do, do we? No, there was just some stuff flying off, I think. Alright, I'm going to turn to this side for a second so we can put another torpedo in the water on him. Try to get some flooding in another part of the ship. Surprisingly, our armor-piercing shells are only getting partial pinned. Let's get another torpedo in the water, boys. Come on. I don't know if we just don't have the angle that we want. I guess not. Got to be careful because I'm exposing myself here to some fire. Let's go ahead and turn. Oh, we did get another torpedo in the water. There it is. And it's going to hit him. And I think it's going to hit him in a spot he's not flooding already. Oh, it was a dud! Darn it! Now you win some, you lose some with the dud torpedoes. We're taking a lot of flooding, though. I don't like that. There we go. We got some more penetration. Three more compartments flooding for him. Four more. I think that might be enough to get this done. This is one of the things I, I can't stress enough. I, I put as much bulkhead and anti-flooding protection on all my ships that I can because that is a quick way to lose is to have that flooding pour over into multiple compartments which is what just happened to him. We managed a peace treaty with Spain so that's helpful. Uh, what can we take? The Azores. That would be kind of nice. They're Northern Marianas. Uh, I'm inclined to take the Azores. Get that off the coast of Africa port plus the money is huge more importantly one less country to worry about this is an interesting fight in the english channel honestly i'll just auto resolve that one no chance i was going to do anything there um, to worry about light cruiser 4 now available in krupp armor 2 it's going to drive up the cost but reduces the weight by 30 percent and is a plus 95 percent 
armor strength. We also have Mark III 13-inch guns. That's all important stuff. This, however, is a major, major issue that we need to deal with. Lost four transports in the Philippine Sea, four in the South Pacific, four in the Caribbean, six in the South Atlantic, three in North Ocean Oceania, four in the North Sea, three in the Indian Ocean. My goodness. We did sink a bunch of British transports, but not nearly as many as we lost. That is an absolute mess that cannot continue. It's just the British presence is everywhere with these transports. Ugh, brutal. Absolutely brutal. I've got to end that war with the British. I mean, it just we're just not in the place as a global power to deal with them. So let's see what we need to do to make that happen. Uh, it doesn't even give me the option for a peace treaty, probably because we're losing. Uh, we need to take on the British somewhere, somehow. I've got a decent fleet right here to do that with. He's got one battleship right there. I don't think he has much going right there right now. Where are all his fleets? I mean, they're just, I mean, the French are kind of floating around all over the place. He's got one light cruiser there. Five battleships here, though. Where are they going? All right, you know what? Let's send this fleet. Oh, you know what? We're going to send half of them. Yeah, those are a couple of big boys. Going to send half of those to the Central Atlantic. And then I think we'll send the rest to West Africa. Well, this is interesting. I was not expecting a meeting between fleets being me and the Japanese in the North Atlantic. And we are heavily outnumbered in this one. This will be really interesting because his battleships are big. 13-inch uh, guns, quite a few of them. I mean, his tech can't be that great because the Japanese don't have great tech. Uh, but these are big battleships, as are mine. But he's got a whole lot more, especially with these heavy cruisers. My Elster, going to take it out for a spin for the first time. This is the latest tech uh, heavy cruiser that I've got. This should be an interesting matchup. So a couple of things here. Uh, the Oldenburg and the Mecklenburg are two different battleships. This is one of our older battleships. This is one of our newest ones, 27,000 tons. Not the absolute newest, but it is one of the newer ones. It has the four turrets. So we've got eight 13-inch turrets or uh, barrels on this one. Elster, the newest tech we have. Uh, as far as heavy cruisers go, so we've got 9-inch guns, as well as a whole bunch of 3-inch guns all over this thing. And torpedoes with a 3-kilometer range. And then a couple of light cruisers that are trying to catch up, the Anne Frank 2 and the Geffion. I'm probably going to need to slow down my speed so I can let those guys catch up. And I want to I wanna be careful with both of these fleets because, oh boy, that was a big hit right off the bat because we're heavily outnumbered, so we don't have the benefit of being able to take a lot of hits. My accuracy is only 9%. We already took a 13-inch shell that did 17 inches of penetration. That must have been on my deck. Wow, serious flooding from that. That is not... Oh, there's another one. Jeez. I thought the Jap Japanese did not have good tech. How do they have battleships this big and that accurate at this stage in the game? Look at that thing. That's a dreadnought. That's the first dreadnought we faced. And we're told that the Japanese are behind on tech. But apparently they were pouring a lot into building dreadnoughts. I was not expecting that. And really not feeling great at the moment about this Oldenburg took a lot of flooding damage from that we need to take these things out like right now 
Alright, our 8 inch guns are now in range. Let's look at the destroyers. That's not a destroyer, it's a heavy cruiser. And I am not liking how this is going right now. I was not expecting this from the Japanese. Especially in the North Atlantic. Jeez. We're starting to spot the rest of his fleet now. Alright, Sorgu, 13.2 inch. It's only got 13 inches of armor. Which I guess isn't much less than I have. We're still only at 3% accuracy. That's crazy. I don't know if that's because of the damage. No, the Mecklenburg's not any better. I mean, we're going straight. Maybe need to slow down a little bit more? I don't know. Come on, let's get some hits on the Soryu. Oh, Elster took a big hit too. Oh my gosh, this is bad. This is a brand new ship. Brand new ship. Getting lit up by 13 inch guns. My goodness, that's bad. This whole, this whole thing is bad. Elster's pretty well dead in the water. Soryu is just tearing me up. Oh, we did sink one of his heavy cruisers. Didn't see that coming the way it did. That was two hits from a 13 inch. Alright, let's get some smoke going. That'll at least protect Elster a little bit. Elster's got that three kilometer range on the torpedoes, but it's just pretty much dead in the water at the moment. Come on, we gotta start hurting the, the Soryu. Up to 13% accuracy now. trying to get the Elster out of there, but they just can't move at the moment. Absolute sitting duck. Yeah, we're, we're taking care of business on these other ships. It's just the Soryu and the Kenrin that I gotta worry about. Those are some beasts. I don't see a, see a way that Elster gets out of this alive. Unless they can get those engines going in a hurry. And we sank another heavy cruiser. Oh yeah. Big time. That was two hits from 13 inch guns. I mean those 13s are just, just, just wreaking havoc on his cruisers. Those battleships. Ugh. Come on, Elster, run, baby, run. Good. Basically no ability to move. I'm trying to give him something else to shoot at besides the Elster over here. His battleships are too far away for me to really get at them right now. Alright. I think we need to get get our light cruisers out of here. What are we shooting at over here? Is there another ship? Oh, there is. There's another heavy cruiser. Elster, 
It's a brand new ship. It's done. Alright. Let's at least try to save... Oh, the Anne Frank 2 is dead in the water, too. They absolutely have no ability to move. Oh, this is a disaster, and I did not expect it at the hands of the Japanese. World War One is not going so well for us so far. It's just too many countries to be at war with at once, and I didn't want it, but... I just kept getting those events that fired that basically forced me to choose between spending $600 million and going to war. And I didn't have it. Are these two going to be able to get out of here at all? I mean, Geffion's going to get away. And Frank, too, can't even move. Alright. We're going to have to try to go in closer with these battleships. Although I'm afraid at this point of losing them, too. Come on, Anne Frank, too. Alright, we got a little bit of engine power, but... Now he's just... I mean, the entire fleet's firing on them at this point. Stay alive! No, they're done. Alright. Time for the Elster 2 and the Anne Frank 3. We did sink another heavy cruiser. I mean, so... In terms of tonnage sunk, we're still winning. But this does not feel like a win at all. Alright, let's just go ahead and start trying to sink some of these smaller ships. Because we're not doing anything against the battleship right now. Sunk a couple of his smaller ships. We're about to sink another heavy cruiser. The Iwate. And if we get lucky, we might hit the Kashima while they're coming in behind it. Yeah, maybe not. I am starting to turn toward him. I'm going to try and get a little closer, but now the Oldenburg is getting lit up again by his battleships. Alright, we need to try and do something against these battleships. So our main gun is shift alt right click. So we're going to get our mains going on the battleships. Get our secondaries firing on these light cruisers the best we can. Got to do something. What's Soryu's accuracy look like? 5%. The weather just got worse. That doesn't necessarily help me. My accuracy is only 1%. Oh, we just took some more hits. Now we got a crazy bounce going on. 1.2% accuracy with the big guns. That's insane. Mecklenburg's at 13%, so it must be just because of the damage the Oldenburg has taken. Or it's the ships they're targeting. That could be it, too. Not landed anything. This is brutal. Absolutely brutal. Yeah, the weather just took a major turn for the worse. I think it's time to cut our losses and get out of here. Let's turn and go. Alright, we finally got away. Uh, obviously, the victory points slightly favor us, but... It doesn't tell the whole tale. Obviously, the main concern here is that he's got some serious firepower with those battleships. And I wasn't able to contend with that. So we're going to have to send what's left of our fleet back for repairs. And we're going to have to go hunt down those Japanese battleships with a pretty substantial force. And just when you think it couldn't get worse, we've got our first engagement with the British and it's two dreadnoughts, including one that's 32,600 tons, bigger than anything I currently have on the water. I have ships that big under construction. 
Uh, they do have only 11 inch guns, but these are massive ships, 16 inch or 16 uh, knots of speed. So that's kind of slow. Uh, it's a 1908 tech, but it's one, two, three. Interesting. They've got three single 11 inch guns, two doubles. So a total of seven 11 inch guns, a couple of eight inch guns. Uh, it's overweight. I'm looking at the flaws. Uh, fuel deficiency, chance of fire, ammo detonation chance. Uh, 18 inches of armor, though. Uh, but it's 38%, which means it's not the top tech. But my goodness. We've got the Weissenberg, which is a Mark Graf class. It's faster. Uh, what's his engine horsepower? 17,000. Ours is 29,000. We've got 16 inches of armor, but ours is plus 78%. Uh, so, in theory, we should have an edge there. We have bigger guns, but let's see. Alright, we've spotted them. We're heading straight on. I'm very nervous about this. This is, this is key. This is our first meeting with the big boys. I mean, these... Oh, he's got one turret on top of another. That's insane. So you can see the single 11 inch guns here and then the duels on either side. That's a fascinating build. That gives him the ability though to have one, two, three, four, five, six up front firing at me. This is going to be all about what we can do early. I mean, I've got six up front with 13 inch guns and we've got a decent accuracy already. Wow, how's Victoria Louise even afloat right now? All right, hold, hold on. Let's pause here. Let's detach them and get them out of here. They have no business even being involved in this action. I don't know why they've got so much damage. All right, I'm going to turn slightly because I want to try and get my rear turrets firing on these guys too. But I also got to be careful about the angle he's not anywhere close to me so far I want to see what his accuracy is once we identify him let's turn a little more then we can get the rear turret on I don't have a ton of deck armor so we gotta be careful of plunging fire almost identified Oh, I didn't mean to separate all of them out. I don't want to do that. So let's get Siegfried back behind here. We've got a decent accuracy, 18% already. Come on, baby, let's land some hits. Looks like we're using high explosive right now. I guess we're just hoping to start some fires. That's what he's doing, too. Alright, what's Triumph's accuracy? 10%? 11%? So not as good as mine, so that's a start. We just dropped to 0%, though. I think we... we oh, it changed targets. Don't change targets. Please. Because then we have to re-bracket and we have to re-zero him. He's got 12, 13%. We're only at 5 because we switched targets. I'm going to have to drop my speed to try and increase the accuracy. It'll increase his too, though. Come on, get the accuracy up higher than 5%. Why is it so low? Is it because he turned away from me? There, now we're up to 23, 25. It's because we fired all the main guns. 30% accuracy now. He's only at 9, 10%. I like that a lot. I like those odds. 3 to 1. 
in terms of chances to hit. Plus mine are bigger. My shells are bigger. My eights are in range, but I think his are too. Uh, his are actually just out of range at the moment. What are my eight inch gun range? 10 and a half, 10.8 kilometers for HE shells. His are only eight kilometers. So we've got the tech, at least for now. But if he lands a lucky hit, it doesn't mean anything for me to have the accuracy. All right, come on, we gotta land some big hits. He's running away. Get back here, you chicken. Come back and fight me. All right, we're landing some hits. After this next round of 13s, I might switch to armor piercing just to see what it does. Yeah, the angle is just so tough right now. It's down to 20% accuracy now. All right, here we go. We're going to fire some armor piercing. Let's see what it does. Nothing but ricochets. All right. Oh, that's a big hit. I've landed the same number of hits as him, but I'm not causing the damage he is. There's a big one. Oh, he's starting to turn, finally. Oh, yeah, he's starting to zero in on me now. Triumph has some damage, though. Taking some serious flooding. Yeah, we're definitely going to focus on them. Let's try and finish one off and uh, level up the odds a little bit more in our favor. There's another flooding penetration. We've got two compartments completely flooded. We've got four more that are flooding. See if we can cause a little more penetration than that. We just did. His pumps are on top of it, though. And Weissenberg's taking some structural damage, but neither one's taking much flooding so far. There we go. We're starting to zero in on them a little bit more. I need to turn this way a little bit. Now we need to penetrate a few more compartments so his flooding can't stay on top of it. Looks like I've got some damage to one of my turrets. Come on, baby. Come on. Hit him. There we go. Tower damage. That'll help with hurting his accuracy. just not causing the floating damage I'd like to. I just feel like with 13 inch guns and better accuracy I should do okay but he does have more armor than I do. penetration and fire starting to hit him with more structural damage he's starting to turn away from us we're probably gonna end up switching targets again yeah we did All right, what do I do here? I mean, I guess we just keep shooting it out. We're winning so far. But it could change in a heartbeat. There's a big hit. Real good hit on the Remillies. Lovely. 
It's a war of attrition, boys. Oh, that hurt. Siegfried hasn't taken much, though. Well, Siegfried's still doing AP. Let's go back to auto for them. Let them fire what they think is best for the time being. Okay, I've decided I'm going to go ahead and start pursuing because he's, he's trying to get away. This will close the angle for a little bit, so he has a hard time hitting me. Well, hopefully we can maybe land a few more hits and get a little closer. Currently the range is uh, ten and a half kilometers. Accuracy still 12%, which means that even going straight at him, and he's getting low on HE ammo. So going straight at him, we're, we're keeping pretty good accuracy. Alright, let's go ahead and slow back down. Start turning again so we can get the best accuracy and the best firepower going. I want to finish off the Triumph as quickly as possible here. There we go. Big hit. Big hit. Engine damage. Flooding damage. Triumph's pretty much dead in the water for the moment. Five kilometers out. We closed that distance in a hurry. There's another big hit. We're about to, oh yeah, we got a torpedo detonation. Triumph's done. As soon as we damaged those engines and they stopped moving, they became a really juicy target. 46, 47 percent accuracy. Yeah, we've got them. There's the flooding. First British battleship. Going down. 29,000 tons. Lovely. Now all focus is on the Ramillies. Surprised beyond belief that I fared so poorly against Japanese battleships but I'm doing so well against the British. I absolutely would have expected the opposite. Now let's go ahead and speed up. I'm going to go close the gap and try to take this other one out. So as you can see, I have completely fried the back end of his ship. These turrets, the funnel, the tower, it's all toast. And now we're pursuing and landing big hits. Close the gap to five kilometers. I think that's probably a good spot to be. We've got some damage on ours as well, but nothing like what he's experienced. And now he's got... What do we have? Six 13 inch guns there. We've got eight 13 inch guns here. Just a massive amount of firepower. Main thing is, we've got to avoid the big hit that he could still land on us. He's pretty much dead in the water now, too. Oh, there's a big hit. We destroyed one of his main guns. Major structural damage flooding across the whole bottom of his ship. He's done. That's it. Oh, that was awesome. Lovely job, boys. Lovely job. I don't know why Victoria Louise was so damaged coming into that battle, but uh, 
That could not have gone better. 41,000 victory points. Took out two British dreadnought battleships. Why, yes, I would very much like to be at peace with the British government. Let's agree. Let's hope that it actually works. Okay, we've got, uh, oh, a whole bunch of British transports just got sunk and French. We lost some too, quite a few. So nobody is being helped by this war right now. We're all suffering. We do have this naval invasion going against the French, which only has a 13% chance to succeed. But the main thing here right now is that we've got fleets. All right, this one's actually okay. But we've got fleets that desperately need, there's our new port out in the Azores, desperately need to get repairs going here. Um, yeah, these are the three. Let's move them back to port. Williamshaven. I think we had the other one too, the one that was fighting against the Japanese. Where's that one? Is that this fleet here? Yeah, big time. We'll send them back to Hamburg. Well, that's unfortunate. The war continues after failed negotiations. Okay, uh, this will be probably the last battle that we fight for this episode. We do need to rebuild the Elster and the Anne Frank, which will be on the Anne Frank 3 now. But, uh, yeah, let's go after this French battleship with a big slew of destroyers. See what happens. Torpedo range is one and a half kilometers, so we're going to have to get in close. We may lose one or two. I'm waiting to hit my smoke, though, because we're just get all getting into formation, so they're kind of spread out a little bit. And I'd rather hit the smoke when we're close. All right, let's do it. Got a big string of destroyers. The first torpedoes to get in the water are probably going to be at a bad angle, but at the very least they'll cause him to maneuver funny. And that'll be a start for us. There goes the first torpedoes in the water. Obviously, very little chance to hit with those. The angle is just too bad. Oh, uh, we hit something. I think we hit him with the... Uh, what did we hit him with? Two-inch guns. All right. That works. A couple more torpedoes in the water. Are those the first? Yeah, that's the second set from the next destroyer. I think we're going to just barely miss on that. Now he's putting one in the water, and that is going to hit me. No, it's not. Oh, yeah, it did. Darn it. Okay. He put a whole bunch of them in the water. Wasn't expecting that. All right, we expected we might lose some destroyers in this fight. But even if I trade all of my destroyers for sinking a battleship, it would be worth it. Alright, we're going to come along this side. I'm actually going to turn off the torpedoes for now. Until we get a better angle. Still five minutes from being able to do smoke again. Alright. Oh boy, that one got lit up. And this isn't going as well as I'd hoped so far. We just can't get at the, the battleship quickly enough to be able to get our torpedoes on him. Ah. Maybe I should have rethought this. I've lost two already, and I haven't even landed a hit on him yet. Alright, torpedoes in the water. Another terrible angle. And all five are going to miss. I wish that you could manually aim the torpedoes. Because I definitely would have done that differently. 
because we could have easily put a spread out that he couldn't have avoided all of them if we would have just aimed it better. Oh, jeez. Wow. All right. There go two more, including one in the back. Yeah, this is not going so well. We just can't get an angle on him. All right, let's get out of here. Forget this. Not ideal. Not at all ideal. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and uh, get our Elster 2 and our Anne Frank 3 built. And I think we'll call it an episode. So uh, definitely an ups and downs kind of episode. Our first real significant defeat at the hands of the Japanese. Though technically it wasn't a Japanese, or it wasn't a defeat. Oh, so we're not going to be able to build those other ships yet. We've got another big fight against the British coming. It's going to be the Jane Lou, the Kerfurst Friedrich Wilhelm, the Freya, and we're taking on five, five British battleships. If we're able to win that battle, that would be huge. But we'll come back with that in the next episode. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.